All right. So I'm here in the beginning of Illustrator. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open a new file. And I'm going to open, uh, I'm going to look at a print file. And I'm going to make it, I'm going to switch this to inches. And I'm going to make it um, 11 by 17, 11 width by 17. Now you can do your poster in a portrait orientation, which is what this is right now, or a landscape uh, orientation. Either is fine for a poster. So that really is up to you depending on what you're doing. And I think most of you had portrait orientations, but if you did have a, a landscape, that's fine too. I'm gonna have you go ahead and create two artboards right away because we're gonna do two variations of our poster in Illustrator. Um, in other words, we're gonna use the same elements, the same information and do two uh, distinctly different ways of approaching it and, and using those design principles in mind. A couple other things we can set up right away if we like is um, a bleed. We are not going to worry about that because we're not gonna be printing this, but if we were printing it, I would have us add a bleed on, not really necessary given that um, we're an online class and so we're not gonna be printing these. And I'm gonna go ahead and have us change it to RGB because again, we're an online class. We're gonna be working more digital and showing it digital. So I'm gonna keep it all um, RGB. And I realize I made it print, but it, and that's why it's giving me a little exclamation here saying, we're gonna switch it to, to RGB. Actually, you know what? Maybe we better leave it the same YK now that I'm saying this. So if you do want to print it, you could. You know what? Let's leave it CMYK so that if you do want to print it, it's in the right color space. All right. So here we are. And um, when I say, okay, you're going to see there's two artboards. I'm going to make these artboards a little further apart from each other so they're not right on top of each other. And I can do that by clicking on the artboard icon on the far left here of the toolbar and just hold down my artboard and move it over. And so I have a little more space. That's all I can do. You can move it anywhere you want, but I'm just going to keep it aligned with my first one and just move it over. And then the next thing I'm going to do before I get any further, is I'm going to go into my workspace. And I want you to see that you're probably on an Essentials or an Essentials Classic. Um, we're gonna move over to Layout because we're working in Layout um, as we're developing a poster. And so I wanna see, I'm gonna make my window a little smaller so you can see everything. I wanna have all of these windows available to me. So you can see I have my two artboards, and I can see I have transform, I have my color swatches, I have gradient stroke um, available to me. And then I have the sub keyboard, which is showing me where my type to tools are under the A, uh, my character tools, under the P are my paragraph tools, under the O are my open type tools, character styles, paragraph styles, assets, Linking, we're not gonna worry about that. And if I wanna write comments, we don't need to worry about that. But those tools are handy. And on the left, we have our toolbar, which we started working with. So we, we know that already. We have a selection tool, a direct selection tool, pen tool, curvature tool, shape builder tool, or shape tool, sorry, pencil, which is under the paintbrush. So you have paintbrush, blob brush, and pencil all together. You have your type tool, which is also type on a path and vertical type tool all together. You have a rotation tool, which underneath it, if we click and hold, you'll see there's a scale tool, a reflect tool, and a shear tool. You have your eraser tool. Under that is the scissor tool. We have a shape builder tool. So there it is. 
and it allows you to combine shapes to create a single shape. You have the gradient tool and a mesh tool. Color picker, width tool, blend tool, artboard tool, which we just used to move our artboard over, and magnification, uh, which allows you to zoom in on things. And if you hold the minus key down, you can, oops. Oh, it's wanting to do that. Command or control minus reduces things and plus brings it forward. So that's what I use there. And then these little dots way down here let you see all the tools. So if you're like searching for a tool, you're like, I don't know where it is, I can't find it. Just click on these three little dots at the bottom and this lets you get into all the tools and it, it categorizes them. So it shows you that all your select tools are at the top, your draw tools are here, your type tools are here, paint tools, modify tools, so on and so forth. So that is like a little quick cheat, cheat tree, uh, cheat area to get to into your toolbar. Um, and then lastly, this um, these two are the um, color default fill and stroke and uh, no fill. And you can also do no stroke by clicking this little none, which is the red line through things. Um, and you can also do drawing modes, drawing normal, drawing behind and drawing inside. So we'll walk through a few of those just so you have a better understanding of some of these tools as we go in to understand what they mean and, and how we'll use them. So first things first, you're, um, a couple things. You, we have a sketch. You guys have all done a sketch. Um, one of the windows I want you to open up here is go into layers. And here's your layers down here. And you have layer one. So I'm gonna have you call the layer one your sketch layer. Say okay. And then do another layer and we'll call this art. Oops, double click, art. So when I'm on the sketch layer, this is where I wanna be selecting my sketch layer. Go to file, place, <coughs> excuse me, and um, bring in a sketch. So let's see if I have, this is from another class. Let me see if I have a, a sketch I can borrow from one of you. Um, Let me look here. I'm just pulling this. Uh, Jutong, do you mind if I borrow your sketch to use it for a demo? No problem. Thank you. I'm just going to quickly download that. Okay, so I'm going to go here and place. Now, if I just click, it makes it really big. I'm going to undo that, which is Command Z. And I'm going to do it where I go place. And, and I'm going to choose my sketch. And you're going to see I'm just going to click and drag it out to the size of my artboard so that it fits in perfectly. So notice, I'm going to show you that one more time. If I, did, if I just went in and said place, 
selected this and click, it's giant. And I have to resize it anyway to just make your workflow go smoother. You want to go file, place, choose your file, click in the corner and just drag it down to the bottom of your of your artboard. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do the one right now. So you can see I have it on my sketch layer and now I'm gonna lock it. And the reason I'm gonna lock it is so that while I'm working, I can't move it. I can also choose on this layer Um, there we go. I can dim the images. And so because this sketch is pretty dark, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna dim the image and that's just by double clicking on it and say 25%. So that's a little lighter. So it's not, I can see what I'm doing on top of it. So when I did that by double clicking on the picture next to the word sketch, that little mini thumbnail of the picture. And you can do things like you can call it a template. You can, you can lock it, you can print it, you can preview, you can dim. So I'm, I'm gonna lock it, I'm gonna dim it. So now I have it here and I can work with it. Okay, let me just pause for a second. Is everyone with me? Any questions so far? Can you dim it one more time? I'm sorry, I missed that trying to place my own. Sure, not a problem. So let me um, show you again. I'm gonna go ahead and go file, unlock this. I'll go file, place, and place another one. Place it. And I'm double clicking on this little this little picture next to the word sketch on the layers palette. So I'm on the layers palette. Let me move it, cancel. Let me move this up so you guys can see it. So I'm on the layers palette. I'm double clicking the layer options and I'm dimming it. And I can dim it to anything I want. I can even make it go you know, less. I can make it go 10. And these are both on the same layer. So they're both dimming equally. So I have it at 10% now, say okay. And then I can go ahead and lock it. So I can't move anything. Unlock it if I want to access it again. I'm going to delete one of them. I go ahead and lock it. Um, I'm having trouble. Um, like, oh, see, I can see now. But like my um, in my like layers board, I have the sketch, and then it like when I opened that image, it went to like a thing under the sketch and said like linked something. Well, that's if you click this little, if you do this little thing, that's what you're doing. That's okay. the link of the image. You don't want to do that. You want to click right on that square. Okay, let me try that. That's Thank what happened is you click, you clicked next to, to the left of it. You got to click right on that little square. Did that work? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. Anyone else? Everyone else got it? Okay, and I'm just realizing I don't have the chat open, um, but I'll open it. If you have questions, I might not always see the chat when I'm demoing, so feel free to um, just turn your mic on like Melissa did. That's the way to do it. Okay, so, um, all right, so we have our sketch in. We've dimmed it so it's not so bright. Again, if I wanna zoom in, I'm gonna go Command Plus and zoom in. If I want to move it now, I'm going to put my hand on the space bar and it creates this little hand. And then once I have the hand, I can move around the board. So my hand, I'm, I'm using the space bar <clears throat> and using the hand. I, when I, otherwise, it's just the selection tool. But if I use the space bar, it turns into a hand and it lets me move around. Okay. So I'm moving over here because I'm wondering if 
I might want to make these little these little repeating dogs and cats. So you notice that if I click on another tool, like I clicked on the shape tool, and I'm trying to draw, it's giving me a little no symbol. It's doing that because I'm trying to draw where I don't have um, where I don't have I'm, I'm on the not on a working layer. So I need to go to my layers. And I need to get off this locked sketch layer and I need to move on to my art layer. And if I haven't created another layer, here's where I'd wanna do that. So I'm gonna create another layer and have it be the art layer. You create another layer by just selecting, create a new layer. And then it, it, they'll keep going above. I'm gonna delete that extra one. I don't need it right now. So I have this art layer, I'm clicking on it. So now when I go to click over here and I'm on the art layer, it allows me to draw. So I'm gonna look at this sketch and just hold my shift key down because I wanna make them perfect little circles. And right now it's just, an um, it, it doesn't have a fill or an outline on it. And I know that because I can see down here in my toolbar, the fill and stroke are both have a red line through them. And that means there's no fill and there's no stroke. So if I wanna add a stroke, I need the fills on top. I need to click on the square with the hole in it. That means stroke, and now it's on top. And then once it's on top, I can double click, and then I get my color picker. So I'm gonna use um, a color just so I can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna use this red color. And then you'll see on the right here, I have a stroke menu that's popped up, and it allows me adjust the size of the stroke. So I can make this as big or as small as I want over here by the weight. So I'm going to make it three point. That feels like it's matching my sketch. And if I want to make a duplicate, because I have like this whole row, I can hold my option key down and duplicate my shape. Hold my option key down and duplicate. Hold my option key down and duplicate. Another thing I can do is I can hold my option key down once and duplicate. And then I can do Command D and duplicate if I wanted to make like a pattern equally spaced going all the way across. Right now I'm gonna just do op op option key. If I hold my shift key down, it keeps them all aligned. When I un let go of my shift key, it lets me make that duplicate go anywhere. But if I hold my shift key down, it keeps them perfectly aligned. Okay, so now I have my four little dogs. I'm going to copy these and I'm going to hold my option key down and my shift key down to bring them down to perfectly align. So if I was trying to make this like perfectly aligned design, this is how I might do it. Then I might grab these again, hold the option key down and the shift key down. Oops, select them all. Select them, hold the option key down and the shift key down. And this is keeping everybody aligned. And here it's even showing me that I have the right spacing. And then I have two more down here. Oops. Oh. Now I accidentally, I, I um, didn't mean to redo. I can go to edit and I can go redo copy. So edit, undo, edit, redo. So I went back. Grab these two, option, shift. There's my last row of little dogs. Now, I, I'm not at all suggesting that this is what um, Shi Ting Tong had in mind to um, make them all perfect circles. But if that's what she wanted, this is how she could do it. So, um, Another thing to be aware of, you can Command R brings your rulers out. So let's say I wanted to create 
uh, margin and keep everything aligned. If you notice, I can pull out lines, guidelines from my ruler. So that I can just check and make sure all of my circles are aligned. I'm just pulling out, I'm clicking on the ruler and pulling out guidelines. Clicking on the ruler and pulling out guidelines. And I can do the same from the top ruler. I can pull down guidelines and have everything aligned. A couple other things to be aware of when we're dealing with strokes. So notice how in this stroke, um, there's a, a line in the center and there's the color, the width of the stroke is on either side of the line. When you're in the stroke panel, you can choose how to align your stroke. The default is center. I can make all of the stroke fill the shape so now the whole stroke is on the inside. And that allows me, especially for uh, aligning things, it makes it much easier to align things when the stroke is on the inside. I can also make the stroke on the outside. So it can be inside, outside, or center. And and that can really matter when you're when you're arranging things and making corners and tight elements, um, be aware that, that that is how the choices you have. And you'll find those in the stroke window. You can also adjust your line and make it a dotted line. And this is just the default, which is 12. You could make it five, so it's a smaller. If I know my stroke weight is three, I could make it three and it would look much more aligned that way. I can also change the cap of my line, especially when I'm dotted, it makes a difference. So then I can make it maybe one point, or maybe make it five, or make it six, and then make it three. And you can try different arrangements between what is the gap and what is the dash. Maybe you double the gap, make it 12. So lots of different ways you can play with a dotted line. You can make it rounded like that by changing the cap, keep it square by having to have a square cap, longer by having the protect, projecting cap. I keep mine a little rounded. So those are other options. Same thing with the, uh, as with we had before with the align stroke. Um, let's see what else do we have that I want to make you aware of. Um, let me go off of the dashed. Other things you can look at is the line weight. So you can do things like the profile can change, can go thick to thin. And this is true on both our shapes and a straight line. So lots of different ways you can give your shapes extra unique qualities. Again, you can still adjust um, multiple different ways. Okay, any questions on any of that? I'm gonna go back to our standard uniform line. All right. Okay, so I know you've, um, worked a bit with, with um, the pen tool, the pencil tool. Um, this is a design that is, um, I'm gonna zoom in a little again, command plus, space bar to hold down to move. Um, there's a lot of curves in this. So there's multiple ways that could, this could be approached. It could be 
making big circles, but I feel like with some of these curvy lines, I might just want to use the curvature tool, which would bring me to make a point there and a point here. There we go. And then just play with, you know, how, how do I want to curve this? Finish it and make a I don't think I want to do that because I'm losing my shape when I make it a shape. There. The curvature tool also works with these bezanine handles, which can get a little unruly, but I'm going to give this a, sh uh, a stroke. I'm going to go back over. And give this a three point stroke. Use my direct select tool, which allows me to move it better into, you know, I got the basic shape. And I'm going to bring this line over, adjust the mezzanine handle to get it where I want it, and realize I don't need these other pieces. So I'm going to just click on each point and delete them. And then I have just the shape I want. Now I'm going to take that and make it a little bigger. And I can see that my line goes from thin to thick. So let me show you how you can do that in Illustrator. So here is the, the stroke is all one width. If I go over here to the width tool, I can, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see how this works. I can go to this end of my line and I wanted to get it to that thickness. So I'm gonna go to the very end of my line and adjust so that it gets to the thickness I want. I'm gonna take my direct select tool and move it. So here I'm going to adjust this design, the bezanine handle. And I can say, oh yeah, that looks pretty much like I wanted it. Maybe it's a little thicker than I wanted. So then I could always go back in again, still with my with tool or direct select tool. Go back to the with tool. And bring it in just a little bit. There. And so now I have it, you know, where I want it. And I can say, oh, oh it's a little off. Let me grab my bezanine handle and just adjust that. So now I have that thick to thin line that was in my sketch. No worries. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you got. Yeah. So AXA, did you try to go and come back in? No worries. I don't see you coming back in. Did I miss anyone coming in? Yeah, I think my computer overheated or something. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> No worries, no worries, that stuff happens. Okay, I'm gonna pause here for a second. Does anyone have any questions about using the line width or some of the line segments I've shared with you? So the idea, as you can see, is to come in and now with your scan in the background, with your tight drawing in the background, building your design based on your sketch. So. I would keep going through here and I can do different things. I can also use the pencil tool and I can say, okay, I'm gonna try this design. Let me zoom in, I can't. Let's start with this guy. I'm gonna do the nose and I'm gonna do this little mouth. And obviously when I first draw them, they're not, at all what it is, and I didn't even make these two connect. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the size using my direct, direct select tool, bringing the size of the line up. Now, this line looks really cheesy next to this lovely softness of this line. So I need to do a couple of things right away. I know I need to round my, my caps and I also need to round my corner. That's first off, um, I know I need to get bigger make make it much more puffy. <clears throat> and 
I really want to get the same gesture that was in my sketch. I don't want it to be looking like a computer maker. I want to get that hand quality of the sketch into my design. So I'm just going to really be careful on aligning my, my lines. And I can see that I need to bring a little bit of the width tool here as well to make this a little thicker. Nope, I don't want to do that. That's going to make it too. Nope, I don't want to use the width tool. I think it's going to make it too thick. I am just going to make the whole thing a little thicker. There we go. I think that'll be good. Now up here, I want to make this a complete circle. Oopsie. I'm going to select both of those ends and go Command J, and that joins them. And then I'm going to, I've made a really weird little shape, and I want to fix it. So I'm going to select just the points and pull them down a little bit. You know, I'm just not loving the shape at all together. So if I want to use my pencil tool and kind of reform this shape, I'm going to do that by selecting the shape using the pencil tool and having it redraw this circle a little more organically. That's a little too organic. There, so I wanted it to be a little irregular. I don't want it to look like a perfect circle. So now I have it where I want it. Now I'm gonna bring it up to that big size. there. And, and maybe what I want here is it to go on the inside so I can see it. And then what I want to do is take, and I'm going to use my shift key to scale it so it stays where I want it. And so my fill is, um, my line is all on the inside. I can also make it not a line and just make it a, a fill, which is what I think I'm going to do instead, instead of a line. Just gonna fill it with black. Oops, what happened? I'm gonna fill it and say, okay, I don't think, what did I not do? Why is it not filling? Am I not on my layer? No, I'm on my art layer. Okay. What's going on? What did I do? Okay, you got it. So now I can zoom out and kind of see, you know, that I've done this. And I would go through and do that with each one. All right, so I'm going to let you guys work a little and show me what you're, I don't want to overwhelm you with too many techniques, and I'm going to kind of see what your next needs are, but I think I'm going to pause here. I'm going to stop the video here, and then um, we'll do some more.